Hey, it's me, Ma. We're in the ring with Shirley and Lorelai. We have a new chest camera holder. We're going to see how that works. Yes, there's Lorelai. Okay. Let's see if I can get this organized. Okay, Lorelai. Please um, walk going to the right. So Shirley and Lorelai are in the transition stage where Shirley knows what we're asking for on the ground and she's learning to listen to Lorelai on top of her for the same commands. So when Lorelai asks and Shirley doesn't respond, you'll hear me doing clicking sounds and what you don't see is that I also have a whip in my hand and no, I'm not throwing the whip out to Shirley, I'm literally just lifting it up and down behind me, just slightly out so she can see that I am communicating with that whip. If Shirley's doing exactly what she's supposed to do, and she's not used to me talking, so this is really interesting. If Shirley's doing exactly what she's supposed to do, my whip, or what I like to use as an extension of my leg, is hidden behind me. She is just behind me. And that tells her that everything she's doing is absolutely perfect. It only goes up and down. It comes out depending on how, what level we are. Because the first thing we do is... Okay, light post to gate trot, please. The first thing we always do with our horses, I was watching the trot, um, is we ask them to do what we want them to do. We, it's, a, it's a very soft look. We usually use our body to ask them or our voice commands to ask them what we want them to do. And trot again. If... If they do what we ask, we are thrilled with that. However, if they don't do what we ask, the next thing we do is we're going to tell them to do it. And this is a little more forceful. We don't hurt them again, like I said. But we tell them that this is seriously, you have to do this. And then the last thing is make them. And when I say make them, I don't want you to think that we are going to um, force them force them with corporal punishment. We have differing ways of doing it. For example, Lorelai and Shirley were in the arena warming up this morning and their obstacle course is still up for the equine agility. And when you get to the lamppost stop, turn around. Okay, let's go the other way. And there was a box full of milk jars. And I'm going to help here a little bit. I am stepping over here. My whip is out to encourage her to say that we are going forward. Gate to lamppost trot again. And so she worked with Shirley for about 15 minutes to get her to real familiar with the obstacle. And Shirley was refusing. And so Lorelai decided she was going to make her go through that. And in your mind, you're thinking whips and everything. Nope. She pulled out a box of raisins and surely walked right through the obstacle. So when we make them do it, it doesn't always look like what everybody thinks it looks like. Now, Shirley has no problem. She says, I'll go through those, that obstacle any day of the week and trot for a box of raisins. So it's interesting 
the, the different ways we can train a horse without really training them, you know, without hurting them or having them terrified. We have two horses over at the respite. One is Angel and one is Sundance. And both of them, I need to slow down my spin so that my chest stays up with Lorelei. So, and, um, sorry about that. Okay. Every time I look at the camera, instead of Shirley, she ducks, ducks into me. Have you guys noticed that? This is the first day with the camera. Oh, and I'm behind her. I'm ahead of her again. have to work on that. So... In order for this to work, I need to look at her butt instead of her shoulder. I can do that. So anyway, we have two horses down at the respite. One is Angel, who used to be my, uh, Mila, M-I-L-A, who came out of the Centennial Livestock Auction. She's a Mustang. She was with a very abusive woman. And it has taken us months to get her to trust us. And yesterday, she was allowing us to be all in her face and there was no fear and we should have her halter gentled our way by the weekend which means that you can walk in and put the lead line over her neck quietly you can put the halter on and she'll stand quiet and there's no fear and uh, that's what we want for every horse is to be able to do that Sundance yesterday wore a lead line around his neck it went better than normal um, he's still struggling with the halter and lead line. Um, if you do not know or you don't know the story about Sundance, he had eight owners in five states in three years after his tip trainer um, said he was untrainable and took him from the tip right to a sales authority without an adoption in between. And he bounced around a lot after getting pulled out of a kill pen. He has by far been the hardest horse we've ever worked on. We are getting making huge strides, huge, huge strides um, with him. And he's doing really well. Um, when we finally get him halter gentled, he will, uh, it'll, it'll be nice because then he can have the freedom that he wants to go do stuff. Sundance has been with us for about 15 months now. So when I say we go slow, we go really slow. There has been a lot of trauma. We spent all winter getting him to where he could see the lead line without a reflex kick with the back leg. When you get to the elm tree, stop, turn around, go the other way, please. Okay, so what we have is in our round pin... It's divided up into four sections. There's a light post there. There's an elm tree here. And so I can give commands and they know what I'm saying and where I want them to move, the horses. Outside rain. <coughs> okay, you can see my whip's moving. I never hit it with it. I just told her I would. This is kind of say... Laurel, I was asking, I was, that was the tell. I'm telling her, get your butt turned around. We're going the other way. Gate to lamppost trot. Okay, there was a make. Did you see that and hear that? Now, did you see it? Didn't even get any close to her. All right. Halt. We're changing games, okay? Uh, mounting block to elm tree. Come to the mounting block, turn. Walk around. And you don't even have to get to the elm tree. Just once you get turned around and back on the rail, where you're walking really good, just turn around and come back, okay? Does that make sense? One direction, then the other.
Remember that outside rain is lifted up and on her neck so that she's listening to your listening to your neck rain. Give and take now. Good. So Lorelai has this overwhelming desire to ride this horse without a bit. So what we have is a... Now see, I'm backing away so there's space to turn. Now I'm encouraging her to turn. I'm coming this way. She's like, oh, Mima is saying to turn. There you go. Good. Shirley's getting her feet done on Thursday. I think her legs will feel a lot better. She's on a diet and exercise program that's pretty harsh. So she is losing some weight. And this is going really well better and what we're trying to impress upon Shirley if she listens to Lorelai big bad Mima and the whip don't come get her and see I have walked around her I'm making her do exactly what Lorelai said and she's like whoa Okay, I need to listen to Lorelai. And there they are walking off. Lorelai starting her turn. I am moving in position. And. And halt. Her turns weren't great today, were they? Yeah, let me think about what we want to do for tomorrow, okay? Oh, yes, after her feet being done, okay? Let's, I have some ideas. So we're done? I think so, how about you? Okay. As soon as her feet get done, we can also put her back into her canter mode, okay? All right, good lesson.